Jessica here with the Janung team. And today I am joined by Christina on my team. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, we are talking about the city of Wildemar today. What is up with Wildemar? Um, we get a lot of clients asking us about this small town. Um, a lot of our clients, they're originally looking to move to Temecula, Murrieta, much larger towns. And they see a listing that happens to be right just north of Murrieta and Wildemar, and they're like, what's up with this Wildemar? So today we're going to talk about what it's like to live there because Christina lives in Wildemar. And how long have you lived there, by the way? So, well, I actually, I've been in and out of Wildemar for over 20 years now. Oh, okay. We'll start out with the basics, like a little bit of history. So how old is the city of Wildemar? So Wildemar is actually only 15 years old. Um, so it was previously part of the unincorporated area of Lake Elsinore. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it became its own city. So it's still pretty young considering. Yeah. And it's it's growing, you know, little by little here and there. Okay. That is very young. And we have a lot of young cities in our area. This area has been rapidly growing. Um, but yeah, Wildebar has got to be one of the youngest. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So where did the name come from? So <laughs> Wildebar, um, there were three founders, actually. So you have William Collier, you have uh, Donald Graham, which uh, one of the elementary schools here is actually named after. So it just came to my mind. Yep. <laughs> and uh, Margaret Collier Graham. So those are the three founders. So you get Will, Doe, and Will. Oh, interesting. Okay. See, I, I learned something new every day. I didn't even know that. Okay, um, so small town. So just to put it into perspective, um, Miriam and Temecula are both about 115,000. So how many people are in Wildemar? What's the population? Uh, just over 37,000. So okay. quite a bit smaller. <laughs> okay, yeah. So like one third, one third the size. It actually kind of feels bigger than that to me. Maybe it's yeah. because there's some spread out properties. Right. Or, um, but okay. All right. So fairly small area and the median age of people who live there. Uh, 35 according to the city's website. So which I fit right in that demographic. Okay. <laughs> I'm there about. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so kind of skewing younger. That's probably similar to, I don't know, Temecula Murrieta's offhand, but that's probably pretty similar and probably skewing lower because a lot of kids, a lot of kids throughout this whole valley and i can't think of any 55 and older specific communities um so that might be skewing it a little bit younger too okay average income how much is the average household making in wildemar um so it's almost at 107 um as far as the uh, the average income goes speaking of income it just kind of makes me think of jobs I will say that that section of Wildemar, which borders right up on Murrieta, is very popular for our clients because it's right off the 15 freeway. So if you're commuting to L.A., if you're commuting to Orange County, if you're commuting to Riverside, uh, you're, you're, you have a head start. You know, if you're east Murrieta, that's another 15, 20 minutes or Winchester, even Temecula. So um, popular location for commuters, for sure. Yeah, I, I think that's probably one of my favorite things about Wildemar is like, you're just outside of all the chaos, but you're close enough to every, that you're, you're almost smack dab in the middle between Orange County and San, San Diego County. It is a great location. And yeah, you're, you're right. Close to, close to so many things, easy to hop on the freeway, but it does still feel quiet. It's right. kind of, you know, in some areas kind of has a little bit more rural feel to it. Yeah. Um, I, I do, I, I'm in West Murrieta, but I live like very close to the border of Wildemar, I will say so. Um, and we work in Wildemar all the time. We've had a couple listings there recently and currently. Um, but right off the Clinton Keith Road, those shops and restaurants, that's my preferred shopping and restaurant area, my favorite bar, good Italian food place. So I'm in Wildemar quite regularly, even though I live in Murrieta. Um, so um, all right, let's move on to um, some new construction communities that are being constructed there what are what are we working with what are the options so um you have a richmond community that just actually closed out the homestead over there so uh, they just finished um not too long ago with the three card with the what do you call it? the rv garage it's right. right. very rare but they're really tall the homes they had one floor plate with the rv garage this was really cool but yeah those are sold out yes um you also have uh kb's verano that one is above the 15 freeway so um you can always see what's going on down there <laughs> yeah beautiful views up there and it's right 
But yeah, yeah, all single story community, very nice elevated views. And right by my church, Cornerstone Church, whenever I'm there, I'm always looking up at them and I'm like, I need, you know, to be showing clients these houses here because look at these great views. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. they're pretty nice. And then you have the Beza community, the Boulder Creek, um, which I know Scott's got some there, so that's good. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I've heard good things from from the feedback that I've gotten from people living there so far, so they really yeah. like it just because, again, that's like very close to the Clinton Keith mm -hmm. Road, so you have all that access. Yeah. And then, am I missing? Oh, yeah, and we have to talk about the new one coming in, which is Avelino by D.R. Horton, um, which I know you and I are both excited about. Yeah, we're excited about this community. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Primarily for us because it's very close to, it's it's in between the two of us. So just a short drive. And uh, they have the multi-gen in there, which I think is going to be really good for Wildemar. Um, yes. Because a lot of people are looking for that option right now anyways. I agree. They're going to have that home within the home. And yeah, it's right down the street from both of our houses. Like it's kind of right in the middle <laughs> of our houses and um, we help a lot of folks with new construction. It's about half of our business. So uh, the fact that we're getting one so close by, I'm excited about it and it's gonna have the lower mountain views. So mm -hmm. that that will be good. It, they're just moving dirt around right now. So we don't know exactly when it's coming in, but we'll keep you posted on that. Um, okay, how much is it to buy a home there? What's the current median price for a resale home? Um, so it's about 622. It does fluctuate just because, um, you know, typically in a city like Menifee or Temecula, you're going to have roughly a hundred or so, give or take, mm -hmm. um, properties on the market at any given time. Whereas in Wildemar, because it's so much smaller, you've got a smaller range to work with. So between yeah. like 25 and 30 homes. So, but, um, on average, it's about 622, 623 right now. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's important to note when you do have a, a smaller amount of sales to pull from, like a really high sale could skew <laughs> like the average number. But yeah, 622, that that sounds right in the range for what we're seeing in Wildemar. Um, so how is the market? How long is it taking properties to sell? Um, so with Wildemar, it's actually been pretty steady recently. So it's taking about 21 days uh, or so. So, um, and it's been like that for the last few months. Um, but of course, you know, with the interest rates going down, we'll see how the new year does for that. Yeah. Okay. So similar to neighboring Murrieta. Okay. So, um, and you already, we already kind of touched on this a little bit, like how many are sold um, per month. Um, so, so yeah, in the so this last 20, month, 30s. yeah, so it's usually between, uh, 20 and 30, like you said, so November saw 22. So again, that's pretty low versus, you know, Temecula or even Marietta. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and how many listings, new listings are coming on each month to choose from? 22 was November's number. So yeah. Okay. That's the magic. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, I have a question here going back to Avellino, the DR Horton community that we talked about. Um, how big of a community is that, would you say? Um, it should be 117 homes from what I read. Um, so, and again, you know, you've got a, a few different um, different models there. So I think it's between like over 1,800 square feet um, is the starting square footage on those homes. And it goes up into the, the multi-gens. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about the community. What, what is in Wildemar? Um, briefly, I'm going to talk a little bit about the housing because this is always how I describe uh, Wildemar to people. There are lots of track neighborhoods and especially off the Clinton Keith area and they roll right into Murrieta and you can't even tell the difference between the neighborhoods from Murrieta to Wildemar. So you have to like Lennar did a lot of, um, new construction around there. Um, so you have your normal track neighborhoods. And then as you get into the more flat lying area, you have a, like, I call it like a little bit hodgepodgey. <laughs> like you have some independently owned pieces of property that are normally kind of large pieces of land, normally at least a half acre or acre. And you have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Like there's some nice homes, like some people plunk a manufactured home. Some people have like some junk or like a business on their property. So it's like a little bit of this, little bit of that um, is kind of how I describe it. 
Um, so as I mentioned, that shopping area off Clinton Keith Road is especially great because um, you are surrounded by some really high-end neighborhoods in Murrieta, like um, the Guard Gated Bear Creek. It's a Jack Nicholas golf course. And you have um, La Cresta right up the way, which is like your multi-million dollar equestrian property. So you have some really good shopping and restaurants um, right there specifically. But other than that, people like they're always asking about health care. Like, what do we have as far as hospitals go? Um, so we have what was used to be called until this year the Inland Valley Hospital. It's one of the only trauma centers in the area. So um, it's it's good to have that nearby. And then they're also uh, building a new Kaiser building on uh, Voldemort Trail. So, right. yeah. I've been seeing that. It's not open yet, but it's up every time we drive by it on the way to church. So we're always checking on the progress of that. And it's going pretty quickly, too, I'd, I'd say. So they've okay. got the stop sign uh the yeah, it does seem to be going very, they already have the sign up too. <laughs> like they might be missing a couple letters. I think Joshua, my son, my son pointed out. <laughs> oh yeah, I have a note about the Santa Rosa Plateau, which is close. So as far as things to do near Wildemar. Yeah, so um, kind of going back to the La Cresta. So heading up towards La Cresta, you have the Santa Rosa Plateau. That's a national park. Um, and they used to have the visitor center open, but of course, from that fire in 2019, mm -hmm. they closed it. And I don't think they've reopened it. Last time I was there, it still wasn't open. Yeah. Um, but it has really neat walking trails. So especially um, in the early spring when there's still like snow on the mountains. And it, oh, gosh, I love walking around. Yeah. There. It's beautiful. I hear they even have seasonal water waterfalls if you hike deep down in. So I hear that the trails, yeah, they're still open. Actually, Chris just went with the boys. So I know they're still open. So hiking and biking. But yeah, the visitor center never reopened. But there is normally like park rangers there, like at the parking lots, just kind of monitoring. Or I think even some of them charge a couple dollars or something yeah. to park. I think it's like $4. Say $4. Okay. All right. Good to note. Um, so city planning wise, is there anything that they're doing for economic growth in Wildemar? Like what's the plan there? So they actually have, um, they're calling it um, planning for 2040. So, and they're constantly, uh, the city is asking, you know, the, the residents, like their opinion, they hold um, conferences often to get people's opinion on how they feel it should go. Because again, it was primarily a ranching community before, but you know we're going more modern these days, and um, so you have an opportunity to voice your opinion if you want to every third Wednesday. I think they do coffee with the mayor. Huh. Um, is that at the Hive? That's at the Hive. Hive. See, I've been wanting to go to that. That's, that's my favorite bar, <laughs> by the way. They have delicious food too. <laughs> So, um, yeah, they're, they're still working it out. I know the city also just purchased the building um, for the city. So that's step one, I right. think. Right, because they were just renting or leasing yeah. or whatever, but now they have an officially owned city hall. That's exciting. They're moving up in the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there's a lot starting to go up here, and they're starting to expand a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they're repainting all the roads. It's just kind of updating everything. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I did notice that they had redone, which that is one thing that I really that noticed. I mean, that's kind of how I tell I um, judge good city management is like the roads. And like sometimes like Marietta, they take pretty good care of their roads. And sometimes you go right over that that Wildemar line and it starts to get bumpy. But they repaved like all of Clint Keith. So now it's like better than Marietta roads. <laughs> so I feel like now that they're like an official city, they're taking care of their roads, um, which is great. I wonder, this is a total side note, but I wonder if uh, one important thing to note about Wildemar is that it doesn't have its own school district. So it's part of the Lake Elsinore School District. Um, so, and that kind of makes sense because Wildemar is such a small town, but I wonder as it grows, maybe somebody knows this, will, will they ever get their own school district? I'm kind of curious about that. Yeah, um, I definitely think about that often <laughs> because my daughter is in it right now. So, yeah, um, and it just would make more sense i think as time goes on to have its own yeah it i just feel like i don't know it always um seems like when yeah when the government is more local it just seems like they're more invested like when the city has its own police department and its own school district it just it seems like that the performance levels go up i could just be making that up but that's my sense <laughs> That's that's my sense. Okay, so let's wrap it up with your personal experience living in Wildemar. Why do you like it? Why did you choose to live there? Uh, the thing that I like 
about Wildemar versus maybe Temecula um, would be the fact that it has just a small town feeling. Um, I grew up in a small town, so I really enjoy that. But you're also close enough to all the excitement. So it only takes me about 13 minutes to get to the mall, under 18 to get to Old Town Temecula if I want to do anything there. But I'm not stuck in all the the city chaos. Is what I call yeah. it. Yeah, that is awesome. You can go to the fun stuff, but you don't have to have all the traffic and drama of all the fun stuff uh, right around you. Um, and they're getting more and more things to do around there, though. I would say, like, right off of Clinton Keith Road in particular, it seems like they're doing a lot of development. I heard that we might be getting the sprouts. Yes. Um, Last I checked, uh, it was still on the plans. Mm-hmm. And they also have... Um, the Dutch Brothers going in, which is my hot my favorite. That would be great. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Yep. The only thing that we still need over here is the Trader Joe's. We're just going to put that out in the universe. No plan for Trader Joe's. I don't want to start any rumors. People like really jump on that. But, right. <laughs> um, but we need one because now, so now um, we the only Trader Joe's around here has been in Temecula lately, but Murrieta now is finally getting one, but it's on the other side of Murrieta from me. So I feel like Wildemar would be the perfect location so that all of us West Murrieta of people and like Elsinore people um, and Wildemar people could uh, go to Trader Joe's. But anyway, just just putting that out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That Clinton Keith Road is, like you said, it has some of the best eateries around. Um, and if you continue down to the 215 where it turns into Marietta, you have the Costco Center, yeah. which is great. The Target Super Center, which we both enjoy. Yes. And then favorite Target in the area. That's like everybody's favorite Target yeah. in the area and the brand new Costco. All right. So <laughs> that would be a good, 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 good addition. Spot. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining me and hope that you guys learned a little bit more about Wildemar. I know I did. I learned some things today. So appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Yeah.